Did you just tell a black person why not go start a city as though black people didn't do that countless numbers of times only to have their cities burned, destroyed, flooded, and the residents massacred like Central Park, Lake Lanier, and Tulsa? Because in an earlier comment, you told me to go start a city as though Asian Americans didn't do that dozens of times only to have their cities burned, destroyed, and the residents massacred. San Jose Chinatown was destroyed seven times. That's why there isn't one there now. Not to mention indigenous people had all of Turtle Island until, well, you know. Did you? Shalom, Kahalimla, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kwankadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel. Throughout the four corners of the earth, salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, when we plant seeds of wickedness, evil sprouts out. So only evil can be produced from evil. And the seeds of wickedness have been sown in America throughout the generations of its existence. So there's no way in the world we can chant, make America great again. And seeds of mischief, wickedness, corruption, scandal, deceit have been sown all throughout its lands. It's government. So the Bible says that God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So we're going to yield the increase of wickedness here. Let's go here. And I'm operating in the New Living Translation tonight. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah. By the way, over 100 cities of Israelites were burned down to the ground or flooded out. Many of them today are lakes, and some of them have been turned into ice skating platforms or ice skating rinks or resorts. And these are cities that were built up by Israelites and later destroyed. Burn or flood it out. I think Elder Malcolm did a lesson on that not too long ago, covering these 100 cities, probably a couple of years ago. Let's go to Isaiah 47. The book of Isaiah, chapter 47, verse 5. Oh, beautiful Babylon. Wait a minute. Who has a song? Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. You can't make this stuff up. The Bible is the most powerful book on earth. Isaiah 47, verse 5. Oh, beautiful Babylon, sit now in darkness and silence. Never again will you be known as the queen of kingdoms. So this queendom is led by the daughter of Edom, Edomites, Romans. So they're going to go down never to rise again. Oh, beautiful Babylon, sit now in darkness and silence. Never again will ye be known as the queen of kingdoms. For I was angry with my chosen people and punished them by letting them fall into your hands. But you, Babylon, showed them no mercy. You oppress even the elderly. So the Edomites have shown no love, yet they say it's all about love. They have shown no mercy, yet they teach, be merciful. 
they have shown anger, bitterness, yet they promote equality. So this is a system of hypocrisy that the actors are changing the narrative, flipping the storylines, and hiding critical information. Hence, CRT not being allowed to be taught because it's so shameful. That's why the Bible says, Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. So the Lord's chosen people are the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos. Let's read that again. Isaiah 47, verse 5. For I was angry with my chosen people and punished them by letting them fall into your hands. But you, Babylon, showed them no mercy. You oppress even the elderly. Let's go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2. I'm going to go down to Thou art filled with shame for glory. Let's go to Habakkuk 2, verse 15. What sorrow awaits you who make your neighbors drink? What sorrow awaits you who make your neighbors drunk? You force your cut on them so you can gloat over their shameful nakedness. Let's go up. Habakkuk 2, verse 12. What sorrow awaits you who build cities with money gain through murder and corruption. This is heavy. So it's a system built on treachery and deceit, unrighteous dealings, injuries, mischief. Habakkuk 2, verse 10. But by the murders you committed, you have shamed your name and forfeited your lives. So blood must be exchanged for blood. So this is a, a blood indebtedness that must be replaced or recompensed, which means paid back, blood for blood. There is an indebtedness, not just the debt ceiling here, by the way. The Most High wants his payments in souls being brought back up to him. Basra becoming a sacrifice unto him, an altar, which is America, the daughter of Babylon. That's in accordance with our law. Let's go here next. Lamentations 4, verse 21. Are you rejoicing in the land of us? So today, this is the daughter of Babylon, which we call the U.S., or us, U.S. So it's talking about a future place. So it's no coincidence that the U.S. uses that abbreviation, or us, U.S., which is the United States of America, which is a corporation, a corporate business enterprise under the world economic elite. It's no longer a national sovereign territory. Lamentation 4, verse 21. Are you rejoicing in the land of us, O people of Edom? But you too must drink from the cup of the Lord's anger. You too will be stripped naked in your drunkenness. So they're going to be made drunk 
with the cup of the Lord's wrath. His arrows are going to be poured out into this place. We're just talking about these nuclear missiles. So this place is going to become a lake of fire. It's going to be so much devastation. It's literally going to look like a lava lake. I mean, I've never had a lava lamp. Just constantly turning over boils of red blobs. Or have watched lava run down the side of a volcano. This place is going to look like that on a grand scale. Limitation four. So they're being exposed first. And you have a rising threat in the east of a coalition of nations joining together against the west. So they no longer see her as delicate, calmly, pure, wholesome, righteous. They're looking down upon her now. Her skirts are lifted up amongst the nations around the world. Germany is even turned on her, along with Great Britain and France that are in bed with Russia. And they're mad now because they're not getting their subsidized natural gas because of the destruction of the pipeline over there that connects back to Russia, the Nordstrom II pipeline that Biden threatened to destroy. Let's keep going. Lamentation 4, verse 22. O beautiful Jerusalem, your punishment will end. You will soon return from exile, but Edom, your punishment is just beginning. Soon your many sins will be exposed. So the time of mirth and rejoicing for Edom is coming to an abrupt end. In a moment, with these hypersonic missiles that are traveling at Mach speed plus, that's going to turn this place into a wasteland. It's going to become a desert wilderness. The desert owl is going to make her nest here. The coyotes are going to roam the land, along with the desert fox. The eagle is going to make her nest here. So the Lord is going to make it a wilderness, which it is spiritually already that's going to fully manifest itself. So exposure comes before judgment. The Lord exposes iniquities, mischief, abominations, and brings forth sentencing through the men of the Lord. And then the judgment. Let's go to Isaiah 33. I'm still reading out of the New Living Translation. Isaiah 33, verse 1. Assyria represents oppressors because we were under the ancient Assyrian Empire. So it represents an oppressive regime. Isaiah 33, verse 1. What sorrow awaits you, Assyrians, who have destroyed others? but have never been destroyed yourselves. You betray others, but you have never been betrayed. When you are done destroying, you will be destroyed. When you are done betraying, you will be betrayed. So when they shall cease to spoil, they shall be spoiled. Why you think she's called O virgin daughter of Babylon? or daughter of the Chaldeans. She is a virgin because she has not been penetrated. Her defenses have not been penetrated. The Lord speaks in hip talk. So she is untouched by these foreign invading nations. Never penetrated. Let's get rid of the clothes out here. My voice is very dry tonight. Let's go here to Micah 2. 
Michael 2. See, wow, check this out. Judgment against wealthy oppressors. You can't make this stuff up. Judgment against wealthy oppressors. Michael 2 and 1. What sorrow awaits you who lie awake at night thinking of evil plans. You rise at dawn and hurry to carry them out simply because you have the power to do so. Global forums, world economic committees, planning bureaus. See, the global elites are doing this in their secret chambers, secret chambers. Micah 2, verse 2. Why you think the Bible says, weep and howl, ye rich man. Weep and howl for the miseries that shall come upon you. I think that's James chapter 5. To weep and howl, to weep and howl, that's a deep, miserable sorrow. Hell on earth. When this fire comes down. And the people that you oppress, now you're on the same level as them. When all your wealth and riches are burned up, are thou become as one of us? That's in Isaiah chapter 14. So the same people that you crack the whip against, now everything gets leveled out. When this place gets brought low, equal playing ground now or equal playing field. No fun when the rabbit has the gun. Micah 2, verse 2. When you want a piece of land, you find a way to seize it. When you want someone's house, you take it by fraud and violence. You cheat a man of his property, stealing his family's inheritance. They do this by using military force and occupation. Using the military first policies. Micah 2 and 3. But this is what the Lord says. I will reward your evil with evil. You won't be able to pull your neck out of the noose. You will no longer walk around proudly, for it will be a terrible time. So evil sprouts up out of the seeds of wickedness that's been planted here. So how in the world are we saying, make America great again? At what point was it great? The lynchings, civil war, Jim Crow laws, the 1960s, women's liberation movement, feminism, where the families were broken up, split apart, women leaving the homes, joining corporate America, increasing child delinquency in the prison population, building more prisons because the father's out of the homes. When was it great? Micah 2 and 4. In the, day, in the day, your enemies will make fun of you by singing this song of despair about you. We are finished, completely ruined. God has confiscated our land, taken it from us. He has given our fields to those who betrayed us. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. And prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There was no understanding in Edom. So they're going to take lands that you have taken. And they're going to seize your territories. But ultimately, all nations are getting ready to fall. In this Armageddon or Third World War, that's rapidly approaching. China sees itself as the next world power or military arm 
of the international bankers, the global elites. They see themselves as the rising hammer of the earth. But guess what, Moab? Newsflash, it's not going to happen. Thus saith the Lord. So they're purposely collapsing the daughter of Babylon or the virgin daughter of the Chaldeans in hopes of raising up China as the next military wing. Let's go here to Job chapter 4. I won't close out. I'm still in the NLT. Job 4, verse, the book of Job, chapter 4, verse 7. Stop and think. Do the innocent die? When have the upright been destroyed? My experience shows that those who plant trouble and cultivate evil will harvest the same. Woo! See, this is my circus and parade of scriptures. I couldn't have said it better. So the harvest is rapidly approaching to reap the evil that has been sown against his people, the Israelites, and them that are scattered around the world. Job 4, verse 7. Stop and think. Do the innocent die? When have the upright been destroyed? My experience shows that those who plant trouble and cultivate evil will harvest the same. A breath from God destroys them. They vanish in a blast of his anger. That's the fire from his wrath, a fiery tempest that's coming, starting with nuclear devastation, followed by the laser and chariot fire. Persecute them with thy tempest, a blast. See, let's go here. Last one, Psalms 83. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 9. Do to them as you did to the Midianites and as you did to Sisera and Yabin at the Kashan River. They were destroyed at Endor and their decaying corpses fertilized the soil. Let their mighty nobles die as Oreb and Zeb did. Let all their princes die like Zeba and Zamana. For they said, let us seize for our own use these pasture lands of God. O my power, scatter them like tumbleweed, like chaff before the wind. Chaff is the residue of burnt rubble or stubble. Does not the Bible say that the daughter of Babylon will be as stubble. That's in Isaiah chapter 47. See? Psalms 83, verse 14. As a fire burns a forest, even as a flame sets mountains ablaze, chase them with your fierce storm, terrify them with your tempest. This is a fiery tsunami and tornado happening at the same time. The ultimate terror with lava fire underneath. We got to imagine and visualize this thing. Does not the Bible say he is the king of terror? Absolutely it does. Let's look up this word tempest. Tempest comes from the Hebrew Strong's H5591 first reading Sa'er Sa'er second reading Se'ara Se'ara 
doesn't give it much, much justice here, but it is a hurricane and a tornado mixture of fire, debris, wind, rain, and underneath a fiery, hot, low lava molten mix. So this is ultimate terror, wind, flood, fire, rain, and debris, flying metal objects, and other types of projectiles mixed in together. A whirlwind of fury and fire. There is a recompense coming. Everything we do in this life comes with a price. Nothing in this world is free. Nothing in this world is free. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, because thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, and Kodesh. Double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles of Great Millstone. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Palm Yashurala and the Bud Ball. We got next, Lord willing. Rock a thumb, Shalom. Did you just tell a black person why not go start a city as though black people didn't do that countless numbers of times only to have their cities burned, destroyed, flooded, and the residents massacred like Central Park, Lake Lanier, and Tulsa? Because in an earlier comment you told me to go start a city as though Asian Americans didn't do that dozens of times only to have their cities burned, destroyed, and the residents massacred. San Jose Chinatown was destroyed seven times. That's why there isn't one there now. Not to mention indigenous people had all of Turtle Island until, well, you know. Did you just tell a black person why not go